Hello, and thank you very much for the invitation to speak at this uh, workshop on physical activity and loss of muscle mass in elderly. And what I would try to do is first of all, give a few introduction remarks on the ability to achieve muscle mass with aging and then try to put it into a clinical perspective and counteracting the loss of muscle mass with, uh, with disease. So giving this very broad overview here of a well-known picture illustrating that the muscle mass will decline with advanced age, there's always been the discussion regarding what, how much the training ability in the elderly population will be with advanced age. And I will talk a little bit more in detail about this at a lecture at the main conference, but what I'll mention in this situation is what the ability is for really old people to achieve increase in muscle mass with uh, physical training. And if we look at this study, we can see that even in a population of 83 to 93 year old people, 12 weeks of intense strength training improves not only muscle strength, but also what was the focus here, the amount of muscle mass here indicated as the cross-section area of the quadriceps muscle. But as you also can see, there's quite a scatter in this adaptability, and this is now in the control situation, and this is the 12 weeks of heavy resistance trained individuals, but you can see that there is a significant increase, but you can at the same time see that it's only around two, 3%. So it's a small increase with this training. What is however interesting, even if there's a lot of scatter also here, you can see that there is a correlation between the initial baseline cross-section area and the increase in the cross-section area. So the smaller muscle, the larger percent-wise increase you have with physical training. And I think it's illustrating that there's not something as called a point of no return where the muscle is so small that it cannot benefit from physical activity. So having said that, it's fair to say that very old individuals will be able to improve their muscle mass, but by far less than you can see in uh, younger counterparts. So there is an increase, but it's small. But let's focus at a more uh, important issue, especially in, in relation to elderly in function. And that's the situation in which you uh, with intervals will lose muscle mass larger than just the aging um, can account for due to immobilization, for instance, in relation to disease and hospitalization. And here schematically illustrated as a loss in muscle mass that then is not completely reversed afterwards. And thus there will be a gradual accelerated loss of muscle mass with repeated uh, disease bouts. So let's have a quick look uh, in the overview here and here illustrated experiment where healthy young individuals of 20 years of age are compared with elderly individuals of around 70 years of age. And these are not deceased individuals, but they're forced to immobilization with, uh, with one leg, a cask, and, and then for having done that for, for two weeks and then followed by a four week rehabilitation program. And what is well known and what you can see here is that the young individuals, they use approximately twice the time they used when they lost muscle. That means two weeks for losing the muscle here and four weeks to regain the same amount of muscle mass. Whereas in the elderly uh, um, individuals, you can see that they cannot come back to the situation that they had before. And they often will use four to five times the period of time they were immobilized to get back to their initial muscle mass. So, but what might be more interesting is that the loss of muscle mass with immob immobilization is not necessarily larger in old individuals. They of course have less muscle mass when they start, but if you look at the percent wise loss here, you can see that the loss of muscle mass in the elder, in fact, if anything, is smaller than the one in young individuals. And if we take a more close look at that, which is done here in the right side, at the bottom here, up here, you have the, uh, the model that was used with immobilization. You can see again this difference here where the old individuals have this loss of muscle mass around 10%. And, and in this situation, the young individuals actually lose around 20% or a little more than that. 
But the interesting thing here is that that is the situation with 14 days of immobilization. But actually, already after four days of immobilization, the old individuals have basically lost the muscle that they also have lost after 14 days. Whereas in the young individuals, there's a, an increasing loss with time. And if you look more in the detail, which is done in this experiment by use of muscle biopsies, you can see that the early loss, which is occurring already in the first days, is basically age independent. And that is primarily driven by the breakdown of muscle or the proteolysis activity and to some extent also the, in, the inhibition in the formation of new muscle. Whereas the later events actually in the younger ones there is an ongoing proteolysis and an inhibition of uh, muscle formation. Whereas in the elderly it seems like they try to reverse the situation. They lose muscle, they try to protect so to speak the last amount of muscle that they have uh, Left, left here. So you will actually see an, an attempt to make more muscle and sort of an inhibition in the breakdown there. And none of these events can really be exchanged, uh, can be explained by apoptosis markers or autophagy uh, markers. But it does illustrate from a clinical point of view that in terms of rehabilitation, it's extremely important to get in at the very early days because that is really where things happening is ha happening very fast. If we look at pharmaceutical attempts to intervene, we've tried to avoid this muscle loss in, in elderly individuals by administrating anti-inflammatory medication. And although it looks like there is a little bit of difference, there is no statistical significance between these two situations. The star here indicating that there is a loss of muscle mass in both situations, but the situation whether or not you give anti-inflammatory drug during immobilization will not change really the amount of loss of muscle mass. If you use growth hormone as an attempt to try to avoid muscle loss, you will exactly see somewhat the same picture. There's a small difference. You avoid a little bit of the loss with administrating growth hormone, but it doesn't influence the loss in muscle strength. What it does do with growth hormone is it makes the connective tissue more strong and stabilized during this inactivity, but it doesn't have a direct influence on the muscle mass itself. So it doesn't really seem that you we have today, to my knowledge, very many drugs that can go in and avoid this loss of muscle mass if you're totally immobilized. What if you're deceased and you want to see if you can regain or uh, just improve your muscle mass during a hospital stay. And this is now tried in relatively old individuals of 84, five years old, uh, over a period of 10 days admit, at, um, admitted to a geriatric ward. And what you can see here, this is a functional test, the demi score or 30 seconds chair rising test, how many times you could do that from a chair. You can see that in the situation where you didn't do any physical activity during the hospital today, there was no change in these situations be at a time at admission where people already had been sick for some days and lost muscle mass and to discharge. Whereas in a situation where people participated in regular, not heavy strength training, but regular training, you could see some improvement of the function. So it looks like you can improve some of the things even in this short period of time. And if we go more in detail and really look at the muscle mass, this is done here where the elderly patients were asked to do training with one leg, whereas the other leg was not trained. And there you can see the improvement of muscle mass, uh, even if it's only about 2% is significantly more than in the resting leg. An interesting aspect was that if you take these geriatric patients and take all the people who are able to do the physical training and actually did the training and then look at the individual's level of circulating markers for inflammation, in this case, the CRP values, you will, despite this sort of little bit scattered picture here, find a sign of a, a lower effect upon muscle mass with training the higher inflammatory levels you have. And if you divide people into people, those who have more than uh, 50 milligrams per liter of CRP, you will see that they have absolutely no effect or improvement of muscle mass with train. We're doing the same kind of training than those who had a CR lower CRP value where you would see an increase. So it might be that we should try to avoid loss of muscle mass by intense training in elderly, but also look at if they have a high inflammatory level at the same time, you maybe could have a less effect in this situation. And here you can talk about maybe creating an effect by intervening against the inflammatory situation. 
So what if you are so poor that you can't do the, uh, the physical training yourself? Well, we try to look at that again in a fairly old uh, population, geriatric population, up to 95 years of age. So we try to do electrical stimulation of those lying in bed on one side, whereas the other leg served as a control leg and then took out muscle biopsies and measured the, the muscle strength and the muscle volume. And if you do that just over again, a 10 day period, what you can see is that the electrical stimulated side or that leg who get, received electrical stimulation had actually a more pronounced down regulation of markers for protein breakdown. So that would mean that the electrical stimulation would inhibit somewhat the accelerated breakdown. And also for myostatin, which is a negative regulator of muscle growth that was also inhibited with electrical stimulation. So this would favor that you avoid the loss of muscle mass and maybe even stimulate a new formation of that. And you can see proliferating cells and macrophages are also stimulated by this electrical stimulation. And especially the connective tissue is really upregulated in this situation of electrical stimulation. So far so good, but what comes out of that? And this is shown here where the electrical stimulated leg, in fact, over these 10 days avoided a loss in muscle mass, whereas the control leg, the contralateral side lost around 3% of the muscle mass is estimated here as the lean leg mass from, from DEXA scans. So is electrical stimulation now sort of thing that could be supplemented on top of physical training? If you're not doing strength training very good, could you then get an extra effect out of that? So the question is, is it efficient or realistic to perform electrical stimulation in addition to voluntary training in elderly geriatric patients? And we've tried to look at chair stand plus minus electrical stimulation in a group of 16 people allocated to each of these treatments. So both had uh, chair stand training, but one group had a little bit of electrical stimulation on top of that. And we could not see any additional effect of electrical stimulation about on the chair stand performance. And in fact, those who received the electrical stimulation had a high level of discomfort, larger dropout rate uh, in the electrical stimulation group, and a lot of patients did not want to participate in. So, so my answer would be no to both questions. It's neither efficient nor realistic to perform electrical stimulation on top of, um, of uh, voluntary training. But what it does show still from the previous study is that the electrical stimulation is efficient in fully immobilized patient. So bringing this to an end and trying to conclude what I've presented so far is that in, in very old individuals, the ability to achieve training induced improvements in muscle strength and mass is limited. It's worth trying to do it, but there's a limited effect. Immobilization is associated with a very rapid, within very few days, loss in skeletal muscle uh, mass in elderly, and that calls for immediate rehabilitation. The loss of muscle mass with immobilization cannot be counteracted with anti-inflammatory medication or growth hormone administration alone if you're totally immobilized. And recovery of muscle mass after immobilization is slower in elderly and effects of training during immobilization is dependent upon circulatory levels of inflammation uh, indicators in elderly patients. Finally, electrical stimulation in immobilized patients can counteract the muscle mass loss during hospital stay and suppress atrophy signaling pathways in parallel with stimulation of connective tissue and cellular remodeling processes. And electrical stimulation, however, does not have any additional clinical effect to voluntary training upon skeletal muscle and is best reserved to be used in fully immobilized uh, patients. So with these words, uh, I would like to thank my collaborators at the Institute, especially Anas Carlsen, who is a postdoc and made a, a, a significant contribution to the results I've shown here. And I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.